Well, I've been uh, using the uh, anterior approach for over uh, almost two decades. And uh, as you uh, gain more experience with this approach, uh, you, you notice the deficiencies and the areas where improvement can be uh, uh, achieved. And uh, one aspect that uh, is always a bit of a, the Achilles heel of the anterior approach has been the wound healing. And I've always compared that a bit like a, a total knee wound, where it's under constant tension and tends to break down and uh, drain a bit more. And uh, the anterior hip wound with the classic uh, longitudinal incision has that issue. And that's where the anterior path or a transverse type of incision, which is more aligned with the normal skin fold, uh, really has the appeal to uh, really bring the uh, anterior approach to the next level and minimizing these type of problems. Well, I think every time a reamer goes in and out of the um, acetabulum, when you're doing a standard approach with standard instrumentation, the position of that reamer changes every time. With the cannula, with the path technique, that reamer is gonna end up in the exact same location, exact same trajectory. So I've found that I don't have to actually look at it under fluoro. And then on top of that, because the instruments aren't in the way, the drive shaft of the reamer is not in the way of you actually seeing the cup, you can actually watch it under direct visualization still through a pretty small incision. Well, the straight anterior approach is already good because we're not cutting any muscles or anything. Um, but in order to get a visualization so that you can prepare the, the cup, the acetabulum, and then prepare the femur, uh, we had to make a fairly long incision down the thigh. By using the cannula, the, the distal half of that incision we don't need anymore because we're, we're using a percutaneous uh, route kind of through the subcutaneous tissue. So we save that incision, we save muscle dissection. You can make your incision in a spot that is less likely to involve branches of the nerve that we're trying to preserve. And it allows us to see the femur better. So we can still do all the same releases that we normally would do. We just see them in a better way and we can insert our brooches and our stem in a much more favorable orientation which should negate problems with damaging muscle, damaging the skin. So all those things together, it, it's making the acetabulum, allow, because the acetabulum is made easier, it's actually making the harder parts of the surgery easier. So it's a, almost like a, a proxy uh, way of thinking about it. Then here's where it gets more interesting. You put your retractor medially, put your retractor laterally, opens it up, and think about it. When you're bringing those retractors out, instead of pulling against the skin, you're pulling within the line of your incision. So you're not, you're not putting tension on the skin whatsoever. There's one of the reasons the incisions look better. Then the exposure, once I have that exposure, my anterior capsulectomy, the same. Make sure your femoral neck cut is appropriately short so it's not in the, your neck's not in the way. You move a couple of retractors around, excellent exposure to the acetabulum. So it's not like you have to use a different retractor. You don't have to say, I must use a different approach or a different incision. You can use your same incision and your same retractors. You just add this as an adjunct. And in time, I think you will find you can make smaller, less invasive incisions. You can change the way you, you, you do the surgery from the incision position. Um, you might split the muscle a little bit less, but all those things are positives. I just, there's yet to, that I can see a negative side to why somebody would not want to try this.